In the last video, we got this old Ford 5.0 brought to the 21st century with a distributed submission. It started up, it idled. In this video, we are going to get it tuned to where we can start driving the car again. So stay tuned. Welcome back. In the last video, we got the engine started and idling, which was super exciting and a huge relief to myself. Yes, there were some wiring mess ups that I did that I had to fix but those were all pretty minor in uh, the grand scheme of things. And then the car started up and idled perfectly. Uh, quick recap of the whole setup that we have going on here. So we have an EC5 ECU out of a Crown Vic with a Motes quarter horse in it. We have the coils from a Godzilla engine. The cam and crank sensors are from a uh, Explorer engine. The mass airflow is from a Terminator Cobra and then the harnesses are stock but have been reworked by myself. So now that we have the car actually running, it is time to get it tuned up to where we can actually drive it. Because right now it is drivable, but not, you don't want to be able to really go drive the car because it's not uh, dialed in at all. It's running really rich at the moment. So yeah, it would be great to go get the car dyno tuned, uh, but this setup is just so custom and, uh, really is kind of getting outdated from all the technology nowadays. I'm sure if I tried to take it to a shop, they would be like, why didn't you just put a aftermarket system in it? Which is a valid question, but as we've gone over, uh, this is a good DIY setup. It's a little bit cheaper and it works. There's nothing really crazy about this engine combo that I need to really go to an aftermarket system at, the, at this moment. So sometimes you just need to go with experience over convenience. So I'm going to do remote tuning through EFI Dyno Tuning. Michael at EFI Dyno Tuning has basically been pioneering this uh, EEC5 kind of standalone system and is the go-to person for these old Fords and new Fords to get them uh, tuned up and driving perfectly. He's got all the steps laid out on his website of what you need to do to do the remote tuning to get it uh, all dialed in. So there's three easy steps. Uh, step one, after we get the car started up, is we'll go drive the car. So yes, it is drivable at the moment, even though everything is not dialed in completely, but we'll go drive the car, uh, just partial throttle kind of things. Uh, we'll be doing like kind of holding the, trying to hold a constant uh, mass airflow, air mass kind of value, and we'll ride the brakes some to kind of try to get, uh, to load up the engine to get some higher values. And then we'll finish it off with a uh, second gear, half throttle pull up to shift RPM. So step one, we'll take a couple iterations to get everything kind of dialed in. And, and that step is mostly just trying to get the fuel uh, all dialed in. And then from there, we'll move on to step two. And step two is wide open throttle pull. So we'll do a second gear, wide open throttle, all the way to the shift RPM. And then this car, that'll be basically the mid 60s uh, mile per hour. So it's all street legal able to be done on the street. And then once that is all done, which that one might take a couple iterations also, uh, we move on to step three, which is just driving the car around normally. So we'll be going, doing some driving on the interstate, some partial load kind of things, coming to a stop, taking off from a stop. Uh, we'll probably romp on the car a little bit since that is kind of what this car is made to do. Getting that remote tune, obviously you're not gonna be able to do like you won't know the power that the car is putting out. You won't be able to tune it to the absolute limit, but that's not what I want for this car. This is not a drag racing car. This is an autocross car. So I want it to be reliable for first and foremost. And then from there, something that is responsive and is uh, good on power, but this thing needs to be reliable. So if we back it off the spark a little bit, that is completely fine as long as we're, it's, Everything's kind of responding well to the on and off throttle that we do a lot in autocross. So, you know, there's a lot of on off throttle uh, things, braking, getting back on, some wide open stuff. So as long as that is all dialed in, which I have complete confidence that we can all do that during the remote tuning session, and then the car will be good to go. So let me show you a little bit of the setup that we got going on for the ECU. So we gotta be doing uh, data logs in order to be doing all the remote tuning, obviously. So Let's jump into the computer. 
For doing the tuning for the data logging, we're gonna be using uh, Tuner Pro RT. So we got everything loaded up here. And then we just can hit this connect. And then we get this uh, blue box down here. We're connected to the quarter horse. We can start our data log with this uh, red button. We can then also show uh, a dashboard with the car on. It's showing uh, values. We can see the, the throttle pedal move right there. So this will be all really uh, useful. I haven't really looked at all these values on here, but we do see uh, some temperatures down here. We got spark, we got the throttle there, um, some fuel trimming values there. So RPM, yeah, the zero right there, RPM. But I'm running into a really big issue getting the, the data log. So everything looks fine, you know, when the car is off, but as soon as I start the car up, uh, that little connected blue box uh, turns red and starts saying error. And at that point, the, the data stops coming through, the data logs stop. Uh, it's just, it's losing connection. And in order to get connection back, I gotta unplug everything and reconnect. And it's uh, really inconvenient. And it's also happening like 30 seconds after starting the car. So it's something to do with uh, engine running, which I'm really thinking it's probably uh, noise related. So I have done like, some US or some uh, tin foil on the USB cable. This USB cable also has like the little uh, ferrule on there to help with noise. I've gone through like every USB cable that I own. Uh, unfortunately, this system still uses like these this old uh, mini USB. So this is just not really used anymore. So you can't, it's really hard to find, especially finding uh, a nice, uh, cable most of them are just for charging so they're kind of flimsy not shielded and this is like the little uh ferrite uh, bead on there to help with uh, noise but i do have some things that i need to check on the car but let's just go over good practices for building a, an engine harness which i try to do and there's some things that i probably need to check over just to make sure that i am following them correctly but let's jump to the engine bay. Let's go over a few uh, best practices for doing up a uh, engine harness. For one, I use the factory harnesses as much as possible. The factory has already put in a lot of testing to kind of figure out all the, the noise situation. Uh, it all has the powers and the grounds ran correctly. Grounds should be ran to chassis, uh, nothing should be directly connected to the battery. All these, all the grounds basically from the ECU do run over to the battery area, but it attaches to the chassis, not the battery itself. As for power, you want the ECU to get a clean power source. Coils are a really dirty power source. Along with the alternator, it's a dirty power source. You do not want the ECU power to be a branch off of uh, either of those. So you want a dedicated uh, wire for the coils uh, all of them could be off of one wire, but you want one wire going for your uh, coils, whether you have one coil or multiple, and then you want a separate uh, power going for the ECU, which can then also power some of the other sensors. But you want to make sure that those stay, stay separated, which they are. And then on the power for the coils, since they are a very dirty source, you want to have the capacitor the it's a noise suppression uh, capacitor so there's one right in here that is a uh, factory ford all uh pretty much all harnesses at this point have that uh that capacitor in there and it's just a branch off of the power wire and then it is connected to ground and that's to help filter out uh, noise on that uh power wire for the crank and uh, cam sensors. I don't know if you can really see it too well in here, but for those, those are twisted pair wires and then they are also uh, shielded. The shield needs to be connected to ground on one side and it's probably preferred to be on the ground uh, um, over by the ECU. So it's shielded only on one side at the ECU and that's to reduce any noise in that. That's why you use a twisted pair for uh, those ones because they are uh, VR sensors, which is like a just an AC signal. Same with your ABS uh, speed sensors. Those are all twisted pair. 
and a few other sensors here and there if you have them like uh, I think a knock sensor is that way too. So I've gone through everything, all my grounds, all my powers look really good but I just have a lot of noise going on on the car. So I need to figure that out. I'm kind of, I, I don't know, I've put a couple of uh, post onto local Facebook, onto forums, just trying to get some ideas because I've done everything that uh, I can really think of to mitigate all the, the noise, uh, noise problems. So I do need to get maybe a better USB cable or maybe add more uh, ferrite beads to it. I had only had one on there. You can maybe put one on each end, but Got some more troubleshooting to to go. This is uh, getting a little little frustrating for me. Um, hopefully, we can get it figured out because I am kind of on a, a time crunch to be able to get this all figured out before the next autocross. If I can't, then it all has to come back out, and the other harnesses, the sock harnesses, have to go back in. The stripper has to go back in. So let's hope. All right, we got it figured out uh, at least enough to uh, actually take the car for a drive. Sometimes it is still losing uh, connection, but we are past the 30 second uh, threshold at this point and I've been able to do uh, several data logs at this point to get the tune kind of progressing. So what the issue was, it was uh, noise related. Uh, you can use a uh, AM radio, just like a little portable one like this to kind of go around and try to find uh, noise. And it was kind of interesting, as soon as the car started up, you can kind of hear the noise that was coming through this uh, AM radio, kind of like in the lower frequencies that didn't have like a station on it. It sounded very similar to the, the idle. So it was definitely a uh, noise from the engine, which then kind of just led me to be the, the coils as you would uh, probably assume. So for that, I was looking at uh, some of the other harnesses that I had laying around here and looking at the factory uh, ECU uh, wiring diagrams, just trying to figure out what may have been different between uh, a stock setup to my setup. And I noticed that for like the Marauder setup that I was kind of copying off of, uh, it had two of those uh, filter capacitors. So I put another one into the coil wire on the, this pasture side, and that allowed me to uh, be able to data log. So those capacitors are just kind of look like this. So this are the ones that I kind of got from uh, EC5 setups. This uh, big round one is kind of the one that's used on the big coil for like the distributor. As far as like their, the sizes, I, I don't really know what's the difference between them, but I just used uh, two of these little guys since that is what came on the, these, uh, the Crown Vicks and Marauders and everything stock. So these were really easy to find. I already had several of them from the harnesses that I had laying around, as I said. So maybe I need a third, I don't know, but for right now, we are getting data logs. I'm still waiting on the delivery of that USB cable that will hopefully be a little bit higher quality cable than the ones that I had uh, laying around. And maybe that will fix the problem completely all together. But at this point, we are getting data logs. So we are now ready to move on to step two. So let's go take the car for a drive. All right, it's really exciting. We get to go driving now. So I got to go out and do like a step one kind of uh, log, which is going out and trying to get a whole bunch of different uh, uh, IMAF counts. So we'll be doing a couple of different RPMs, doing some brakes to try to load the engine to try to get some uh, different uh, mass airflow readings. Uh, we'll also do uh, a half throttle pull in second gear up to basically our shift RPM and then we've also gotten to go ahead and do a wide open throttle uh, pull so that's gonna be exciting it's gonna be the first wide open throttle pull that I've done in the car with the the new setup uh, so we're able to do one of those only uh, so let's go driver so 
already the car drives way better than it did with uh, with the old setup in it. Again, that one wasn't really ever properly tuned. It was remote tuned also, I believe, but not probably by uh, the caliber of person that's remote tuning this one. And I mean, this thing already drives way better than the, I ever did before. I'm stoked with just how it is. We haven't even gotten to the point of, you know, doing any kind of power pulls. All right, we'll try a uh, half throttle pull. Now we'll just start a second, leave it a second. After that drive, we are pretty much good to go for uh, for racing. I was like, hey, I got an autocross coming up. I need to know if it's uh, safe to drive or if I need to go through all the work to get everything changed out. And he said it is good to go for autocross. We still have a little bit of a tweaking to do, you know, to get the idle all dialed in, to get the drivability stuff all dialed in. but. It's a race car. It just needs to go wide open and it is good enough to go wide open right now. It's actually good enough to drive around daily driving, man. The tune is dialed in. I really, really liking how this is going. Uh, also, I got the speed sensor all wired in. So the speed sensor from the transmission, you know, it went to the ECU and to the, the speedometer. I figured out how to get it wired into the, the ECU, it goes to the OSS, not the VSS uh, one. So it is working, which means there that he has a patch in this uh, code that allows you to do a two-step. So now we have a two-step. I still need to go test it, but whenever the vehicle is not moving, uh, zero speed, you hold the throttle down, it will hold you to uh, whatever RPM you set it at. And then as soon as there's movement, it will go to full uh, RPM, which is actually raised it up to uh, 6,700 right now. We might dial it back down just a little bit, but right now it was still making good power up to, I think we had it set earlier to like 64 or something like that. And she was still making power up to that point. So that is all pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to having the, the little two-step since we don't have the traction control unit anymore. It won't be quite the same because it's not going to be limiting a wheel slip, but we're actually going to be able to have the the, st the steady state RPM for our launches, which is going to be uh, really helpful to get consistency going. And then we'll still have to, you know, pedal it or slip the clutch and everything to get those uh, because as it launches without uh, with having too much wheel spin, you still want a little bit of wheel spin, but not having the traction control unit to actually dial that in every time we're gonna have to do it on our foot, but not a big deal. Not too worried about that, just having the RPM so I know that I'm launching the same RPM that Ashley's launching, uh, that it all works. So now that is all good to go and we got an autocross coming up, so I need to get the car loaded up and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, later.